Okay, this is the design for my 95 Tacoma tray build. I, I initially drew it up here in SketchUp just so I had an idea of the overall design I wanted to do. Um, so that way I wasn't creating the whole thing from my head. It's always easier to have something drawn up just so you have an idea of what it's going to look like in the end. I didn't go with all of the details that I had it I had put on this design, but it's pretty close. So this is why I'm building a flatbed. This tailgate had been replaced like a year and a half ago, two years ago, and all this rust was treated and prepped when I painted the truck two years ago, and it just fell apart from throwing surfboards and everything in there. So. It just really doesn't have any strength left in it, so that's that's why we're doing this. The flatbed build. I'm gonna take off all of the truck bed and all of that right now. Um, so I'll just put you on a time lapse so you can see the progress. Ross got to it. Exhaust was in the way on that one, but pretty rusted too. When I painted it, this had some rust, but I re-seam sealed it. Obviously it's gotten a lot worse. And since I didn't take off the bed when I painted it, all of this was a problem. And you can tell that's gonna have to get addressed, but that will be at a later date when I get my shop. I'll fix all that. Um, the rest of the frame, some biffy spots here and there that just need to get cleaned up, like all of this. 
um, started rusting pretty good but not too bad some sides are worse than others um, the most concerning part of the frame is right here on the chassis for the shock mount it looks like it rusted through so let's see if we can focus on that but that side's good um, typically these Tacomas have problems in this area but all of this is still super solid um, just some slight surface rust around but the spring hangers are good and that bed mount needs to get cleaned up a little bit but uh, we'll get this pressure washed off and we'll do some repairs on this and make these mounts and get it all cleaned up and painted Okay, there she is all cleaned up. Oh, yeah, so that sucks. So not too bad, most of it will clean up with a wire wheel. This is kind of the worst of it here. Down in here. some scale on it this side should surface that will clean up and then that piece isn't so bad I'll brace that okay so on this part here I am just cutting down the main frame sides um, out of two by three eighth inch steel Okay, so here I am just cutting the cross supports for the tray. These are gonna run side to side, front to back. I believe there's five or six of them, so I'm just trying to do all the cutting here at once. So on this one, I am just cleaning up all the tubes and adding a bevel so they are ready to weld up. Okay, on here, I have leveled my cinder blocks out side to side, front to back. So everything is level there. And this is what I have to do working in the gravel to make a level surface to go ahead and tack these up so I'm just laying everything in and then I will check my square so I went ahead and just tack one corner just to hold it there and then I will pull out the square and start squaring everything up from there I'll get this side roughly in place and tacked and then go around and you'll see here in a second I will um, do my cross measurements and adjust accordingly from there.
it all squared away, I just had measured out my spacing and I already have my tubes pre-cut. So I just have um, two lengths of tubing running from the front to back bar to set my height. Um, and then I just have to tap everything in and um, some, some of them are a little tighter fit than others and they hold themselves in and then the other ones I just throw the clamp on to hold them tight. But I just tack those in and just slowly move down the line as you can see here. Um, and that gets everything level front to back so all the supports are in the same spot. Okay, here I am just starting to weld all of these supports in. Um, as you can see, I just am lifting it up and rotating it around. Um, I'm trying to space out the heat a little bit um, to eliminate warping. And some of you might see that I am using a shielding gas with this outside. Um, here in Costa Rica, we don't have that much wind where I'm at, so it usually isn't that much of a problem. I just run it a little bit higher than I normally would inside of the shop. And then when I do feel gusts coming, I just don't weld. So it works out pretty good. Okay, so I kind of came up with how we're gonna do these mounts. This back one here, this is two by three eighth inch. Um, squared rectangular tubing. We are just going to do, I've got some 3 16 angle iron, two inch, or maybe it's inch and a half, um, that I can just weld a tab on right here. This will get end cut off right here and then capped. Okay. So anyways, there'll be a box cut out here, allowing access to the inside of the tube. And then they'll be folded over a flat plate welded in on both sides so it keeps the tube sealed and then it'll just have a hole so nut and bolt can go through there same thing with the top here or the front this will get cut off um, i'm going to cut these to six feet right now i'm going to move it in to half of the front tube and then the tray will sit on that and then it'll it won't hit the very end bar this one um, because that will mess up my tail light area so it'll just come in the float I might have to weld something in there um, and then I'll have to figure out exactly how I'm gonna deal with this fuel filler I don't know if this area is gonna come out into the guards or where but I'll get that figured out next step um, and then it'll just be the same thing there for here and then those will just weld on wherever they lay right on here. Um, this is the bottom side. So it'll just get flipped over and then I can weld it in once it's all square. And then the tray will be mounted and then from there I can put the trailer hitch back on to figure out how far down my back hoop is gonna be. And then that'll also tell me the height that I need for my headache rack. Um, just because what I drew up on the computer is just a little different than what it will be once it's actually sitting on the right thing because I just kind of estimated my measurements.
we've got our mounts here. I'm just gonna come up with a marker and mark where my hole is. I'll leave a little bit of space here so I can run a bead. This will be capped. Um, same thing with this side. Just kind of sitting there right now. So I'll mark that, mark the hole, drill it. I'll weld these in. Same thing with these other mounts. Like I was saying here, I'll just come up and mark my hole. Mark on here where to cut. And I'll cut out a square out of this. And then lastly, same thing with this. Mark a hole. And then we'll just mark roughly where that square will be. And then going forward, this will get cut in the middle somewhere right around here. Um, and chopped off and capped. What do you think, Cruz? Cruz, what do you think? He's camera shy. Okay, so we got our bolts mounted. The only thing is this just needs to get cut lengthwise. So all of our mounting spots. This will get tacked in tomorrow. Same with this side. Bolted and bolted. I just need a little bit more time to measure everything up and make sure everything's square. I don't want to weld it today. So it actually lines up really well that way. What do you think, Cruz? You ready to go to the beach? Huh. Bad. Pretty happy with it. So I'll, once I get it all mounted square tomorrow, I can start building the back and the headache rack. It'll start taking shape. In hopes to keep this video somewhat short, I am going to split it up into multiple episodes. Um, thank you for watching and check out episode two.